Hi there. I just wanted to pop in and say hello to everyone and talk a little bit about some self-care tips for empaths because I've noticed, um, in fact, I receive a lot of inquiries from people saying, can you give us some tips as an empath? I speak about self-love and self-care. Hello, can you hear those? <laughs> They're trying to talk to us. Um, and. Uh, you know, I receive a lot of emails from people or messages saying, can you give us some more tips of self-care or self-love for empaths? Now, every time you do something that's deeply caring for yourself, that's a sign of self-love because what you're doing is you're recharging your energy. You're recharging your batteries. You're giving yourself permission to do that. You're actually caring about yourself because be aware that one of the things that many empaths tend to do if they're not aware of this, empaths who are less aware that they're empaths, what we have a tendency to do is we have a tendency to put other people's problems before our own. And, and whenever we hear somebody has a problem or somebody needs help, even though we need help, even though we are in dire straits, we tend to put our own issues to the back burner and we're out there helping other people. And this can lead to burnout, it can lead to compassion fatigue, it can lead to being drained. For me, I put myself on the back burner for so long, I didn't listen to any wake up calls until I got something as dramatic as cancer. And even when I had the, the cancer, even when my body was suffering from lymphoma, I still put everyone else first and people would come and visit me and do things for me and I would still say that oh don't don't put yourself out and I would still be more concerned about the people who were caring for me than I was about my own illness and so for me the illness wasn't the wake-up call literally it was death it was when I died that I realized oh my god I was supposed to take care of myself I was supposed to learn to receive and recharge my batteries which is why I share the messages that I do I don't want other people to have to wait until they die to realize this anyway so one of the things that I love to do to recharge my batteries is to connect with nature and I have um, a, a tiny little backyard and I was never somebody who had a green thumb before I grew up in a city and I grew up in Hong Kong and we always lived in apartments. And even when I moved here, um, I've been here in the US for six years. I never really tended a garden the first five years that I was here because we were traveling so much. And we just have this little garden which became overgrown with weeds and everything. And we were just traveling and when I was home I was so busy. But when COVID struck and suddenly all our travels were canceled, you know, I have to say for me, COVID was a little bit of a blessing. I try not to say that publicly because, but here I am, I'm sharing it with you, my intimate little group um, of uh, my Facebook family and YouTube family and Instagram family. So um, I, uh, it was a little bit of a blessing because I didn't realize how tired and drained I was. I didn't realize that I was heading in the same direction I was the first time around because I wanted to be there for everyone and speak at every event. And what happens is sometimes when we think we've healed a pattern, it can come to us again in a different costume, in a different disguise. And that's what was happening with me. I was saying yes to way more events and way more travel than my body could handle. Um, so. COVID gave me a chance to just completely unwind and it's so important for you to do that. And then I started tending to our little garden. We cleaned it up, we took out all the weeds, we watered it and I bought plants and I started talking to the plants and they started to really flourish. I never knew that I had it in me to do that. So here I am in front of Mr. B, the Bougainvillier. I have named him Mr. B. Um, for the first five years that we were living here, he was not there, he was not flowering. He was very, very skimpy and, and um, very, very thin, shall we say, thin on the flowers. You could see right through, but now he's thriving. And I say he because I don't know why I have given each of my plants a gender just for fun. 
Um, and, and down there is one a succulent that I call Edelweiss. Now she's a she, she's Edelweiss. And over here, this one is ruby because she flowers red flowers when she's flowering. And she was tiny when I got her, just a little, really little tiny thing that I got from Trader Joe's and I replanted her when she grew. And, um, and these are just my fun stuff. And, and, uh, and this, is, this is Pegasus. And this one is Peacock. Pe Pegasus is, is a she, Peacock is a he. Peacock was, uh, was completely flat and now it, he's kind of grown. And then these are my little additions, like my, my little angels, my Buddha, and just fun stuff. I was just having fun here and just adding things. Um, you know, whenever I saw something nice, I just kept adding. And these are uh, solar powered lights. And um, last week, I think when I made chai, I showed you my orchids. I brought them out here just to visit with their friends, all the other plants, but they're indoors. This one is Muffy. Danny named this one. He's an indoor plant. Uh, this one is Valentine because I got her on Valentine's Day and she's shaped like a heart. And this one is Amethyst. So you've met all my plants. Now what I love about nature generally is that nature is a great equalizer. Nature is connected to above and it's connected to below. So ba basically nature is all around us. It is above us, it is below us. And what I find when I'm in nature, like you, if you don't have a, your own space to grow stuff, it doesn't matter. Um, you can just go out, walk barefoot in the grass, you can go to the beach, walk in the sand, in the, or if you're in the country or the mountains, just go hug a tree. Um, because what nature does is, you know, we are all energy and nature does not absorb um, dramas and things. I don't necessarily like to say negative energy, but when you are, as an empath, empaths are like sponges. And as an empath, when you go out into the world and when you are in crowds of people, the people are not negative people, but you absorb their energy. And when you absorb their energy, you're absorbing their, um, you're absorbing their dramas. And sometimes you can't differentiate between their energy and your energy. Uh, many empaths have that issue. A lot of empaths have learned how to distinguish their energy from other people's energies. You've learned to distinguish it, which is great, or you have tools to help you clear the energy. And again, I want to say this is not a judgment of other people. We're not saying other people are toxic. Absolutely not. We're just saying we all have our own stuff. And you want to be able to separate your stuff and your energy from other people's energy. You want to know where you end and they begin. Um, for me, this is really important because I've shared this story before, but I am going to share it again. When um, many years ago, even before I was sick, I used to take on everybody's problems. And when my best friend was diagnosed with cancer, when she received the news and she told me, it hit me as if it was me that received the diagnosis. That's how hard I took it. I took it on because it was a dire diagnosis. And I took it on as if it was happening to me. What we can tend to do, if you are not conscious of the fact that you have a tendency to do this, to absorb other people's energies, if you're not conscious of it, what we have a tendency to do is we tend to think, like in this case, uh, we tend to think the other person's problem is so huge that we put aside all our own issues. And so even when I was going through various problems while she was sick, I had various issues come up. I had um, relationship of family type issues coming up with other family members and things. And I would put everything aside saying to myself, oh, this is nothing compared to what she's going through. I need to be there for her. You see, when we do that, it may be not as big a deal as what that person is going through. But the point is, 
that that person, what that person is going through, you need to be able to identify that that belongs to them. It is not mine. I can be there to help them. I am gladly there to help them, but I need to know that, I need to be clear in my head. I will be there to help them, but that issue is not actually my issue. I also need to tend to my issues before they get bigger and bigger and become like a huge wake-up call. That's what happened to me. When I was on the other side, I actually, I was in this state of clarity, for those of you who know my story and you know if you've read Dying to Be Me or watched other videos, you know that I was in this state of clarity where I understood why I got sick. And one of the things I wanted to know is that because I learned that it was because I didn't love myself. I didn't feel myself worthy. I didn't honor myself. And I wanted to know that why did I get such a huge um, thing happen to me as big as like end stage terminal cancer leading to death? Why did it have to be such a big wake up call? Why couldn't it have been smaller to tell me that I need to love myself? And the clarity or the message that came back to me was you were getting smaller wake-up calls and they were progressively getting bigger and bigger and bigger and no matter how big the wake-up call nothing was big enough compared to what you felt was what your friend was going through everything compared to her terminal diagnosis was not big enough so the universe had to give you a terminal diagnosis so that it compared so that it was big enough for for you to, to, to like really bang your head over the head with this, okay, now here's a terminal diagnosis for you, so you really get it, that you are on a journey. She is on a journey. You cannot wear her journey for her. That is what empaths sometimes have a tendency to do if they're not aware. They get so lost in the problems of other people. And that's what I used to do. I, I say they, not with judgment, but we. If we're not aware and tend to get so lost in the problems of other people that we wear it as if it's our own. And so we have to watch that tendency. And one of the easiest tools to kind of clear your energy and raise your own um, energy, life force energy, is nature because you don't have to do anything. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to say, oh my God, what mantra shall I say? What ritual shall I do? Which like, no, just go immerse yourself in nature because nature is pure. Nature is absolutely pure. It does not take on other people's dramas. It doesn't take on my drama or someone else's drama. Once I have kind of gone into nature, it entrains my energy with the earth's energy and the universe's energy. Because what is nature? Nature is earth and universe. The sky is nature, the animals, birds, the other planets, the stars, the ocean, the sand, the plants, the dirt, all of that is nature. And nature has its rhythm and it, it's, it's mother nature is powerful. It's so powerful. So when you align with nature, you can't get more powerful than that. And for empaths, it's important to do whatever it takes to make you feel powerful. So no matter what you're going through in life, no matter where you are in life, um, whether you're dealing with a physical illness, whether you're dealing with emotional stuff, whether you're going through um, relationship issues, the most important thing for you to do is get yourself in a powerful place emotionally. That's so important for an empath to do that. And you know, and sometimes you will be dealing with naysayers and debunkers who will say to you that, oh, that's all woo woo and that's, uh, that's too woo. Don't listen to them if it makes you feel good. Do what makes, basically do what makes you feel good. Because I have people say things to me all the time, but I'm like, when I feel good, and I truly mean this, when I feel good emotionally, and if I can keep feeling good emotionally continuously, then I notice it reflects in every area of my life, including my physical well-being, including my relationships, including my abundance, including the work I put out in the world for all of you. It reflects on all of that when I feel good, starting with emotionally, spiritually.
That is so important. The other thing I love are crystals. People often write to me and they ask me, what are the crystals that you wear? Um, this one is a malachite with some jasper in it. And this one is a seraphonite, which has like, um, the pattern kind of looks like angel wings. And then I've got these funny bracelets. This one, interestingly, was a gift from Chef Serena Poon, my friend who I did a uh, I did an Instagram live with her recently. Thank you, Serena. I love it. I wear it all the time. It's a um, it, it's a quartz. It's a rose quartz crystal. Um, and I believe this one's jade, and uh, and this one's just got all the chakra stones. Um, but I love my little crystals because they make me feel good. And um, it doesn't matter to me if people say that. Oh, do you believe in crystals? Do they work? Or and you know, for me, they do. And so this is another thing I want to remind you, is that check into what feels good for you. Empaths also, if you are, are not aware that you have a tendency to do this, because you pick up on the energies of the people around you, we tend to have a tendency to listen to what other people want us to do. So if somebody says, starts saying, oh, you have no proof that works, it starts to play on our minds. It's irrelevant. It doesn't work for them because, because their minds don't work that way. When I, um, you know, when I discovered I was an empath, I always knew the way I think. I always knew that I'm highly suggestible. I always knew that, because empaths are intuitive. But what I didn't know was that not everybody thinks this way. That was the big reveal for me. When I discovered the term empath, it was like, oh, we're in a minority. Not everybody thinks this way. So for me, that was a, like a big reveal. So that's when I realized that, okay, if not everyone thinks this way, it means I'm probably, as an empath, um, I'm probably more intuitive than many people. And if you're more intuitive, that means you pick up on the surrounding energies, which is why you are like a sponge when people have issues. You have to be careful that because of that, you may attract more people with issues. But on the good side, it's also a gift because it also means I pick up on the positive energy of nature. When nature entrains me, it actually works. It may not work as much for someone who's not as intuitive because what it means is that their energy is not so open. So whenever someone says to you, oh, you have no proof, try and prove this, anything, you know, whether it's about crystals or nature or intuition or anything, when someone says you have no proof, the thing is the the people that debunk it and that say that they need proof are coming at it from a very different energy which is not an open energy it's a very closed energy that closed energy is not going to attract that it's not going to attract the 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 life force energy of crystals it's not going to absorb what I mean is that's a very closed energy and if somebody comes at it with the energy of I don't believe in this I need proof what they've basically done is they've closed off the gates to their life force energy that the energy of the plants and nature and crystals and other things or generally intuition from our higher self, it cannot penetrate. And so it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So for them, it will never be true even when they try and prove it because they've closed it off. Uh, but when you are so open and you're absorbing everything, it's a gift because you receive the gifts of intuition from your higher self, from nature, from crystals, from all these things very easily. But it's also something that you need to be aware of that you're so open, you also receive the energies of all the people around you. And so you need to be aware of that so that you can become more, um, you can become, you can start to distinguish and become more discerning and say, okay, I want these energies, but I don't want these. Or, oh, I've absorbed too much energy today. Let me go out into nature. So basically, 
those are my, that's my, um, my tips today for if you are an empath. And I just wanted to tell you uh, again that uh, I, my re most recent book, Sensitive is the New Strong, I go into a lot of detail about this, about how to live life as an empath. One of the things that I've done with that book is not just about living life as an empath, but it's about becoming an empowered empath. It's so important as an empath to focus on becoming empowered because the more you love yourself, the more you trust your intuition. The and Trying to reconnect. Ah, okay. Okay, reconnected. Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah, so the more you love yourself, the more you trust your intuition and your connection with your higher self. The less you love yourself, the less you trust your connection and your intuition, and you end up giving your power away to other people. You end up listening to other people even when you, your body, is giving you wake-up calls. You end up still putting other people first even when you don't have the energy to give. So that's why it's so important to love yourself, particularly for empaths, more important than for anybody else. So thank you for listening in, um, and uh, please uh, click like below if you loved this video. Uh, and I wanted to tell you my new book, Sensitive is the New Strong, is now out on audio. It's out on Audible, and it's now out on audiobook. We finally got that baby out. So thank you for tuning in, and I can't wait to see you all again soon. Bye!